Hello and welcome. My name's Savvy and I'm your Dungeon Master for Edelund Chronicles. Um, today we are continuing with our adventurers who have just been, I guess, almost beaten down by a, a group of goblins. And um, we've started on our way with a um, adventurer's guild that's been put together by Ravi JC, the monk. And um, we, we've had some interesting uh, chaos within the group, and um, we have some new players. Uh, I've come up with an interesting way to get rid of some that have left us as uh, we've gone on. And um, I hope you enjoy it, enjoy the new characters, and we'll get on our way with our new adventure. Just a side note. We have run into a bit more audio issue. There is a bit of echoing going on, but it only lasts for about five to seven minutes. So it shouldn't be too bad. And it really makes my voice just uh, sound a lot more mean and menacing and all empowering, which is how a DM should sound anyways. So I hope you enjoy, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey. So let me just get your guys' characters' names, because I'm going to butcher We have Angle, right? Is that close? Yes. And Castellios? Yeah, just call him Cast. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wizard? Because I was going to Castellos. Eh, maybe I'll get it. Castellos. Castellos. No, we have no wizards. Don't you worry. <laughs> All right. So you guys ready yeah. for this? Yeah. Whatever this is going to be. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So um, we are starting back with uh, Brimey, actually, the dwarf that we got left behind. And um, in his beautiful little uh, adventurer's guild, everybody's gone. Oh, you guys can't see this because I didn't bring you over. Excellent. <laughs> All right, there you go. So we have uh, young Brimey the dwarf <coughs> who is <clears> – <throat> he wakes up in the morning and he's doing his thing. And he's just all kind of confused after a long night of drinking and everybody is, uh, is no longer around. So he goes along, and knocks on all the doors, and – the three of them open, so this one opens over here. So the first, the or the second, the third, and sorry, second, fourth, and fifth doors all open. And then he goes to where uh, Sagittarius, sure, where he was sleeping, and he just pounds on the door, and that door's still locked. And Rhyme starts yelling, uh, "Sag, wake up!" We're late. Let's go. And he just hears <clears throat> a big moan come from the door. Kinky. So now, uh, let's introduce our new characters. We have uh, who's playing Angle? That is me. And who is me? William. William. All right, William. How much? Uh, how much D and D experience have you had? None. Excellent. So I can do anything I like. <laughs> no, that's no, okay. I've read up on the rule book a little. Perfect. And uh, just tell us a quick little debrief on uh, your character that you'll be playing. Well, Engel is a wood elf businessman who runs a nice little shop here in Neverwinter. You know, he also has a small uh, calligraphy practice, you know, on the side. Okay. Cool. He cool. also runs a little wood carving shop that's, you know, sells wooden elephants, totems, and the such. Things like that. Okay. Hmm. We might have been there before. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, he's a business owner and he owns the store. Excellent. And uh, we have Castellos. Tell us a little about Castellos and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Orno. Uh, let's see. Castellos is a... Oh, I had it open here somewhere. There it is. 
is a halfling monk from a temple near the uh, Binya Bluffs. Uh, these monks are a little different from normal monks, where they enjoy drinking, brewing, and fighting more than self-contemplation and strict discipline. Um, he killed a griffin by himself uh, to protect the village that uh, sits at the bottom of the mountain where his temple is located. And because of that, he kind of he decided that he uh, he wanted to go out into the world and lo- learn more about uh, different brewing practices and to find bigger and better creatures to fight. Excellent. And now, so what has brought him to Neverwinter? Uh, his elders actually recommended that he go to Neverwinter to search for adventure. They said it was a good right. place to start. Perfect. Perfect. So how this works is um, Castellos was down at the docks and he saw that this worn and uh, battered little pamphlet that says, are you looking for adventure? Meet at the sleeping dragon at 6 PM. But he also notices that it was uh, the day before sort of deal. So, He's like, well, maybe they're still looking, so he's going to head over there anyways. So that's where we leave him, at the door of the uh, sleeping. the sleeping dragon. Um, actually, he probably would have went in, talked yeah. to uh, <laughs> Miss Shelley Cook, the fine um, business owner, and sat down and had, had a few brewskis, I would assume. Oh, yeah. One or two. What kind of brewskis are you going to be having? Does he have a specific type that he likes? Nope. Anything with alcohol in it is good. All right. We'll bring you two of each then. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Angle. So uh, you're going to head down to, I guess, the dock where you've been uh, reported of being robbed. Yes. And uh, you approach the shopkeep and... uh, what um, what do you say? Well, I could see. So I see you sold that wooden elephant of yours. What did you get in return for it? Well, um, sold is a a very wrong term. You can say um, there was this. It was a halfling, and he was talking to me about how this was a a grandfather or a grandmother's heirloom or something fancy i wasn't really listening and i turned away for a moment and when i turned around uh the halfling was gone and he left a bell and a candle i think right uh well um i'll Take those, and do you know what this halfling looked like? Oh, well, uh, well, he was, uh, he was quite small, uh, quite small. A uh, halfling, he, I don't know, Spencer, what's your character look like? <laughs> give us, give us a breakdown. Um, well, according to my journal picture, I'm black and white. Excellent. All right, so we have, we have a halfling <laughs> with uh, he's got a he's got shortish hair. Um, we've got a cape, and uh, he's got a sword and a bow, I believe. That's all I saw. It happened very quick, and um, I do know that he was mumbling something about the sleeping dragon. So. Ah, the Sleeping Dragon. Wasn't there like an adventuring guild going on there? I something? believe there was something going on there. So uh, that's probably going to be your best bet if you want to go. Good. Nice. I'll have to deal with him. Any man that messes with my coin intake is very, very dead. Excellent. Well, good uh, good luck, Master Angle. And we hope that uh, we get back our stolen artifact. Yes. Excellent. Took me at least a week to carve that. Seriously, it was very, it was very, 
very early. Yeah, I mixed up my hours. All right. So with that, it was actually heads over to one. uh to the no, sorry, uh, 1 PM Dragon Eastern or Pacific okay. so 2 o'clock. Now we here. come back to Brimey, the dwarf. Uh at Sounds this point, he's getting very frustrated that uh Sad Sagittarius. Trying to get ready about half an hour earlier. I can't say his name very much anymore. Um, he, uh, you know, I like he, to be prepared. He's not answering. So, uh, Brimey actually no, tries to break down, down the door, and he's very successful. He, you he still know I like to get the prepared. Door with and his shoulder, and he just time, bursts so. it down. Oh, he kind of I need to stands up and looks here. around, and he sees. What looks like a man crumpled over in the corner. So he walks over and he's like, Sag, are you okay? Puts his hand on his shoulder and the, the shoulder of the figure just falls off. At this point, the what used to be Sag stammers up to his feet and his jaw is hanging by a, a flap of skin and... He just lets out the biggest moan possible. And at this point, Brimey just picks up his great axe and hoofs it up the stairs. So he's running out, and he runs up the steps into the main hall, out the secret passageway. He's like, a zombie, run! So he runs outside, and he, he says... Help! He's yelling help sort of thing. Uh, does anybody notice this, uh, Castellos? Uh, Angle notices and walks up to the man. Oh, looks him dead in the eyes. Yep. Oh, the asks, man? The guy who's running and screaming for his life. Okay. The door. Yep. And asks, what, what's the matter? We have a zombie outbreak, and he's coming up the stairs. So as you can see, he's running. Uh, he's following Brimey, and Brimey's uh, stepped out onto the street. How, how close behind him is he following him? He's probably about 15 to 20 feet. Just he, He's a little slower because he's a zombie sort of thing. Okay. So. When Castello sees the dwarf just like burst past and start yelling, he takes his mug of ale and like, kind of like slowly saunters over to the doorway where he just ran through to see what he, the hell this guy's talking about. Excellent. So um, he kind of groups the three of you. He's, he's, he's like, this zombie, is, it's coming out, and uh, he, looks, he looks rough. Like we're going to have to – we got to protect this, uh, this establishment and uh, get rid of this thing without too much damage. So let's wait till it gets outside, and then we'll jump it. Was there so anyone what... else inside of the tavern? Well, uh, Shelly Cook has rounded up his, her girls and put them into the uh, the back room and just kind of locked the door with the little okay. uh, metal slide so she can peek out. And The zombie has paid no attention to her. Uh, he's... He f the zombies feel more like uh, Brimey the dwarf has attacked him as he's, I guess, ripped his shoulder off sort of thing. So as this is happening, uh, everybody, the zombie shambles out of the, uh, of the sleeping dragon. Well, I say we all grab a pint and wait for all of this to blow over. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, you guys are outside, right? So now you're in the street. I I look over and I say, I still have I still have mine. <laughs> um, I guess Engel takes out his longbow, readies an arrow. Okay. At this point, we are going to roll initiative. Castellos, Castellos. Cast I'm going to call you Castellos. Cast. Cast. Cast works. All right, cast. You are up first. All right. Uh, he's going to finish his mug of ale and then just like run up to this zombie and hit it twice with his fists. Okay. So 
And I'm being generous. I'll say that finishing your ale was a free action. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping, yeah. I was like, yeah, hopefully. There wasn't much left. Uh, so, first attack. Second attack. Wow. Nice damage okay. roll. Okay. I was going to say, dear lord. And the zombie is dead. <laughs> no, no. So, at this point, you guys notice that this isn't just like you're just rotting flesh sort of zombie. He's fully kitted out in adventurer's gear. So, um, <clears throat> the first attack hits, and he loses nine hit points. Second hit. Second attack does not. Yeah. All right. And now the zombie is definitely going to take a swing okay. at, at uh, cast here. And you can see that he's got his dagger still in his hand. And what's your armor class there, cast? 18. 18. All right. So the zombie being all cumbersome and slow, swings his dagger down and he he misses the um, misses the monk. All right. Uh, uh, derby. derby. Not derby. <clears throat> I, don't I don't know why, why it's derby. derby. What, what happened there? Don't, don't know why it's derby. derby. It's supposed to be Brian. Whatever. Just ignore the name. Uh, he's he's going to run up and uh, he's, he's going, going to attack. attack. I just got to get all this up here. So he's got his great axe, and he's just going to take a, a swing at this uh, zombie. He gets an 18, and it does four damage to the zombie. And, you know, he takes his great axe, and he comes, and he just... He, he cuts, cuts off, off one, one of the hands of the, the, the zombie, zombie, and the zombie, zombie seems very sort of uh, uh, not bothered by it in any way, shape, or form. So he doesn't carry lost a hand, whatever. All right. Um, Angle. Angle moves up to the side and fires an arrow directed at the zombie. Okay. A 14. All right, so this arrow, uh, you get shot at the zombie, and it just kind of tings off his, uh, his armor. It's of no effect. All right, Cass. Oh, did you have something else, Angle? Um, I guess he would just, at that point, kind of put away his longbow. Okay. All right, uh, Angle, or Cass, sorry. Uh, yeah, he's just gonna make uh, two more unarmed attacks. Oh yeah. Okay, so the second one hits. Uh, the first and when like what sort of unarmed attacks is your monk making? Like, what's it look when he looks like when he's attacking? Uh, just like, I don't know if you know what, uh, let's see, you know what Muay Thai is? I know it would be martial arts. Yeah, it's basically just martial arts, punches and kicks. So a combination of those sort of things. Yes. Yeah. All right. So your first one, what would your first attack have been? Hmm. Just like a punch sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like a punch. And the second one would be a kick to his like, okay. ribs. Perfect. So he gets kicked in the ribs and he just kind of stumbles back a little bit. But he just he comes back for more sort of thing. Um, he's going to attack at uh, cast again. And he rolls a natural 20. Sweet Jesus. Rip. So... Uh, da, da, da. Oh, one second here. And he does 
uh, nine damage to you. <laughs> okay. Don't you only have like 12 hit points? I have one hit point left. Or All no, right. I, have two. I have two left. So the, the zombie, he's he's got his dagger in his hand and he just brings it down right on the top of Cast's uh, shoulder, right in between his neck and his clavicle. And Cast just drops. He's not doing well, but uh, he's still around, I guess. <laughs> Barely. All right. Um, Brimey is going to take another swing with his great axe, and he hits him for 10 damage. So at this point now, uh, Brimey just comes in with his great axe, and he just hacks right at the zombie's waist. And, and he, he literally, literally cuts, cuts the zombie, zombie right in half, half sort of thing. But zombie's not dead. He's still crawling around, doing his thing. He's a zombie. Cutting a zombie in half doesn't kill it. All right. Uh, Engel, you're up. Upon seeing Castello uh, fall to the ground, he unsheaths his rapier and runs up to the zombie and attempts to stab it in the head as it's on the ground. All right. A eleven. Uh, at, this at this point, point you uh, uh, well, you miss. miss. You, it, it just, just kind of glances kinda off um, the zombie, zombie and doesn't, doesn't really, really do, do any damage at all. It's uh, not having the best of luck here. Of no effect. Yeah. Well, this is a wrapped up zombie. So, and there's three of you. So yeah, you know. All right. Um, cast, you're up. I'm just going to try to curb stomp his head. All right, give that a go. Wow. And uh, wow. of no effect to either of those work. All right. So this zombie now is half a zombie laying on the ground. And he's got his dagger in his hand. And he's going to take a swipe at cast. And he misses because he's half a zombie laying on the ground. Um, at this point, we're going to have um, Brimey come in. And Brimey also misses. Uh, this zombie, actually, yeah, he misses. But uh, they can't figure out Brimey's stomping on the back of this zombie, and it's really not doing anything to it. So it's uh, it's sort of a ragtag bunch trying to figure out that they need to kill the brain of the zombie sort of thing. Uh, all right, Engel, you're up. Um, Engel takes out a piece of parchment from his uh, bag, gives it to Castell and asks for him to put it on his neck and apply pressure. He then attempts another stab at the zombie's head. Yeah, okay. Um, so if you were going to do the, um, I guess, the, the paper trick, that would have to be a... Do you have any healing as, with your character? Well, no, but I guess it just would help stop bleeding, right? Okay, so... We'll, we'll use that as a free action, as it's not. It's more flavor text that works. All right. Yeah. So basically. stops the bleeding, and then you're going to attack again. Oh my! Well, uh, since the zombie's laying on the ground, uh, you guys do have advantage on it. So with this, you do stab this zombie right in between the eyes, and it just. Collapses. That's it. It's done. There's nothing else. This zombie stops moving, stops squirming around, and uh, that's the end of Sagittarius, the human sailor zombie. You guys. I hardly knew you. You guys successfully killed a player player character. <laughs> Whose player character was it? Someone who left. <laughs> you, All are, right. you are a cruel DM. 
I, I try, try to, to be. be. I try. So, so at, at this point, point Brian is like, like, oh, my gosh, gosh what have I gotten got myself, myself into? into? This, I, can't, I can't. I can't possibly do this. It's, it's been, been the first, first day, and I've been attacked, attacked by a zombie. By a zombie. I'm freaking out of here. You guys are on your own. This freaking sleeping dragon place is freaking, well, who cares? And you see him just put his great sword back onto his back, and he just walks away and flips you guys off. Angle, Angle asked if he would like to write an incident report on what he was doing before the zombie attacked. At this time, Brimey takes his other hand and flips him off again. What a rude individual. And Brimey wanders off into the sunset. All right. Um, so at this time, Shelly Cook has heard all the commotion come to an end. And uh, as the brothel owner, she comes in and she says, Are you two gentlemen okay? Is everything all right here? She looks down and she's kind of freaked out by the zombie. But you guys want to come in just to get repaired up sort of thing and we can chat a little bit that would be very nice I'll, I'll sit down back at the bar and get another mug of ale <laughs> I, uh, I suggest you look at your shoulder because he kind of stabs you pretty deep I pour we, some ale on it I think he's drinking we, uh, we do have actually a very well doctor uh, well off doctor up with one of the girls. I don't think, uh, if you give him a couple minutes, he'll be right down. Wait, what, what type of bar is this? Oh, this is a brothel for sure. Oh. oh. Yeah. So the doctor's preoccupied, but he'll be, uh, he'll be around. I really wouldn't want him touching the wound after he's done. Oh, there's wash basins inside each of the rooms, so... We're going to hope that he washes. And these, are you insulting my grade A women? Hey, listen, I'm not insulting your woman. I just don't know what the man does in his free time afterwards. Well, it's quite obvious that he's experienced some, some of the greatest pleasures he can in Neverwinter. So, you just better wash his hands afterwards. Your, Your friend, friend could get, get some help, help from him, him, or we, we could just, just let him <laughs> sit here and bleed. But I'm not going to let him sit and bleed in my uh, establishment for overly long. So at this point, she brings you guys in, and she brings over a towel for cast, and he holds it up against his neck, brings you guys some drinks. Is that towel used in any way? Uh, no, it's a clean, fresh towel. So, um, I thank her for the towel and keep drinking. So Shelley then asks uh, Angle, as Costellos is drowning his pain, uh, what what brings you to my uh, to my establishment? I'm looking for a halfling. That was supposedly came by here recently. He has yeah. stolen something from one of my shops, and I would like to track him down. Well, I do know where a halfling has gone, and he was accompanied by uh, two humans as well. Um, but hmm, I do know that we're probably looking for uh, some more adventurers. To continue with our uh, our adventurers guild, if you might be interested in making some uh, money on the side, we can get you along with that, and it'll put you in line with this halfling that you're seeking. Um, maybe. Can you just where were they where were they heading to? As I run a business and I really don't need to make any extra coin. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, they're actually headed to the town of Fandolin. They're uh, dis delivering some supplies to one of the, the local shops there. So, and that's all I can tell you. They left yesterday. 
Hmm. So they might as well be still on the road then. That they very well should be. As it's a good five day horse ride to Fandolin. And uh, sir, uh, good monk, what, what brings you to the Sleeping Dragon? Uh, the, the promise of adventure brought me here. And your yeah. ale kept me here. Excellent. Well, then this Adventurer's Guild might be more up your alley. It would seem so. Excellent. Well, uh, they're down two adventurers, as you've killed one of them, and one of them has stormed off. So um, if you're interesting, interested in it, I'm sure uh, Ravi, the, the handler of the group, will... Gladly accept some assistance if you're interested. That is. Oh, I'm interested. Excellent. All right, I'll I'll write up a, a note here for you, just saying that you'll be part of the guild here. And uh, the person you're looking for is actually a monk. I'm not sure where from, but uh, he might be. You should be able to spot him quite easily. And um, uh, so, Mr. Engel, are you, will you be heading out with um, Stelos to find this party? Sure, why not? Might, might be nice. The roads are quite dangerous, and he will take you to where who you're looking for. Yes. Excellent. All right, at this point, the doctor comes down, and uh, Shelly goes over and chats to him, and then she says something and mumbles, and he just kind of throws his hands up and shakes his head. And you see him go over to a wash basin, and he washes his hands. <laughs> and he comes over to Castellos, and he, he bandages him. Bandages him, bandages him up. There we go, words. And uh, gives him a pat on the back and says, you'll be fine in no time, and he heads out the door. So, at this point, uh, we're going to get you guys on your way because it's still quite early in the morning. And you guys would probably want to keep up with the group ahead of you as quick as possible, I would assume. So, um, Shelly leads you out to the... Um, to oh, the yeah, stadium. do I get any hit points back from the doctor? Yeah, yeah, you'll get them all. You get all your points back. Um, Engel asks Shelley if he could deliver this letter to his uh, friend to ask him to take over the shop while he's gone for the next couple of days. Of course. If you'd like, you can leave it with me and I'll mail it as soon as you head off. Yes, that would be very nice. Excellent. So she takes you down to the stables and she uh, saddles you up with two horses. And the, uh, she says, just follow the trail south until you hit the Tribor Trail. Um, then head east and you'll run into uh, Fandolin. And uh, she just gives your horses a smack. And you're on your way. Whew. All right. You guys good with that? All right. Yeah, so, sorry if I annoyed you a little with the brothel thing. No, no, that's fine. That's good. It's character development. Yep. If she gets annoyed with you, she'll just kick the shit out of you. <laughs> Nobody messes with Shelly. Um, so, at this point, we're going to jump back to uh, Pendle and Dorn, who are, well, they've just got... Shit kick on the side of the road. Just a little bit. Is a good, a good way, way to put it. So these guys have been they've set up camp. You guys are camping sort of thing. And uh slowly nursing your wounds, getting back to to um to your health. And come morning, you guys um did you guys roll perception for me? Oh, great. Great door. 
Yeah, Dorn is, uh, he's not fully awake. And Pendle? Pendle rolls a 16. Uh, Pendle hears a, um, some horse hoofs trotting down the trail towards you guys. Uh, are we just at the side of the road? Yeah, you guys are just kind of just off to the side. There is uh, there is a bit of brush for undercover, but it's not like crazy undercover brush sort of deal. So we've been moved away from where we were currently unco- or where we were, we were unconscious before? Uh, yeah. The, Ravi uh, pulled you off to the side sort of thing and set up a camp. Well, I quickly look around for my backpack that I took off before we started the fight. Okay. Hoping that he would have picked it, he would have brought it yeah, back he, here. Yeah, he brought everything over to the camp. Oh, sweet. In that case, hmm, I'm not really sure what Pendle's is. He may have, he'd take a look at what the, if you can see what the horse, the horse hooves are. All right, well, uh, he would have seen two horses. <laughs> Anything that uh, interests him? Not really. It's just horses riding towards you guys. Oh, he doesn't really care then. Okay. Excellent. Okay, cool. Pendle's going to be the freaking death of me. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, uh, Ravi has also actually heard the horses. And he says, okay, everybody just kind of sit off to the side here. I'll I'll look after this. Oh, Okay. Says Pendle. Oh no! So Ravi steps out, and he just kind of waves down the horses. And who goes there? And uh, Angle and Cast are riding up, and they see this man step out of the woods. And the man says to him, "Who goes there?" It is I, Angle, business fan from Neverwinter. And this is my. Person I know, <laughs> Castello. Uh, oh, Dorn, they're from Neverwinter. We just I, came from there. I pull yes, out the did. letter from uh, Shelley. Shelley, there we go. And Hand I toss it, it t- toss it his way. Ravi picks it up and he opens it and he says, "Oh, have, have I been this? able to hear all of this?" Um, probably. I guess, well, did you go anywhere? Well, I would just kind of stayed off to the side. Yeah, you would, you'd hear this then. And I know Shelly is the, the lady at the bar, right? Yep. yep. Who you, owns it? You had a chat with her. Oh, talk about, oh, I love Shelly. So Ravi is reading this, uh, this note, and he says, well, that's, that's quite... Uh, quite the predicament. He's like, I'd like to thank you for uh, helping slay the dragon, or slay, slay the zombie, and uh, assist with the sleeping dragon brothel. Um, you guys are here. I'm not going to say no to some help. Uh, so, Cast, you're uh, formally invited to the Adventurers Guild. Engel, will you be accompanying him? Uh, I'm just here to find this little halfling that stole something from my shop. He Mm. says to be in this guild. Uh, well, those are quite the accusations you'd be making for one adventurer's guild. Um, I don't know. Wait, what did he say? (laughs) Wait a minute, wait a minute, what did he say? He said he's looking for a halfling that's in this guild. Oh, okay, never mind. Just uh, looking for keywords. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I wouldn't assume that anybody in our guild would have stolen from one of your establishments. Ugh, I hate thieves. Yes, they uh, took a nice little wooden elephant from my store. Hmm. With ivory tusks? I, I can't say that I know or have seen any of this. Do you know what this, uh, this so-called halfling might look like? Read my description of my character sheet. I have one now. Hmm. This 
a romantic mix. <laughs> <laughs> he has a zoo eyes, you know. He has thick, wavy hair. Hmm. And he's pretty short. Aren't most halflings I, short? I, I give Angle a lot more effort like, into that. Yeah, he's a halfling. I put a lot more effort into my description, and I'd appreciate it if you could read the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, like we've we've seen quite a few halflings. Those all sort of, you know, nothing really sticks out there. Do you have any more detail about this halfling? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll just have read this note that Shelley gave me. Excellent. This romantic man's Azu's eyes are brimming with curiosity. His thick yet short wavy hair is the color of polished amber, and his curls bounce around with every motion. Is quite short, even for halfling standards, with a light olive skin tone. He possesses a boyish build. He has bushy eyebrows and a large mouth. Oh, you mean Pendle? Oh. Let me get him. <laughs> <laughs> Pendle, come out here. Oh. This man has business with you. What? Oh, hello. I would like to bring my token onto the screen so I can have a direct confrontation. Oh. You can, if uh, you want to, click on your character sheet, go to the bio and info page. If you have a picture there, just click and drag it in. Well, oh, you, okay, thank you. You literally just click on the name and drag it out, and it'll work. Oh, that does it too? Yeah. Here, there's cast. There's Only the DM can drag it from that spot. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But if we drag it from our own character sheets, it then becomes a token of us. So you don't have to give privileges yeah. or anything. All right. Well, there you go. You guys are good to. Your tokens are. Oh, interesting. Do you want that to be your token? It's up to you. Yeah, it seems much better than this clip art. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm using what I got. Okay. Hey, no, I'm no, I'm not. You know, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Damn it, Jesse! We expect you to draw too. All right. So Ravi uh, is looking at the two and says, "You know that you know that's a that's yeah, Castellos, that's right? Pretty. What? That's that, Castellos. That's not Angle. I didn't bring made. I didn't bring him out. That wasn't me. Oh, might have been me. I don't think I dragged it onto the screen. There you go, Angle." You get clip art. <laughs> oh, no, oh, right. Sorry. You want your character character. I seem to be dragging. There we go. Oh, you look a lot manlier now. Now there's two of them. Oh. Of it's here. gone. Yeah, there's another one. There. He's next to... Yeah, thank you. Castello, sir. Now he's laying down. <laughs> You know, Engel walks up to Pendle, looks him in the eyes and says, Empty your pockets. I want to see if there's an elephant in them. Um, have you ever seen an elephant before? Yes. I think they'd be a little bit too big to fit in a pocket. <laughs> he, he starts to get a little ticked off, says, You know what I mean, thief. Thief? How dare you? Do you even yeah. know who you're talking to? Yes, I know who you're talking to. I'm talking to the halfling that left a bell and a candle in exchange for a priceless carving. Bell and a candle? Oh, my grandmother's heirloom. Oh, I traded for this elephant. Here, one sec. And he pulls his backpack off and he reaches through it, pulls out a bunch of tons of different little objects. And it's like, oh, here it is. And he lifts up the elephant. Oh, this thing. Yes, that thing I spent a week carving. Oh, you are magnificent. Look look at all these details you put into it. They're fantastic. This is the greatest thing I've I have in my possession. Thank you very much for all of your hard work. 
You see, here's the thing. Um, in my store, bells and candles aren't a valid currency. Well, I, I traded for it, though. See, here's the thing. You have to ask first. Oh, I did. No, no. Did you ask or did you just take? That's the thing. No, I said I asked if he would be willing to trade for these, and then he was very busy, so I didn't want to bother him while he was concentrating. So I just I left it there for him. See, see, see. That's called taking. That that's that's not called asking. Well, I did ask. You you you're telling me two different stories here. Are either you asked or he was busy? Okay, gentlemen, then... gentlemen. Ravi steps in and pulls the two of you apart. He's like, okay. I have an idea on how everybody can be dealt with and everyone will be fine. What we're going to do is, Angle, you can come along with us on our adventure and we will reimburse you with what we get in treasure and for delivering this cart. And that should cover the price of this elephant. No, all right. Seems that seems pretty good. All right, and you two gentlemen are all right with accompanying us on our so-called adventure. Wait, wait. Yes, Pendle. I will. Uh, I will allow this as long as he apologizes for calling me a thief. I'm not apologizing I for have... anything. Bells <laughs> aren't a valid currency. Rather we are not an orcish society. <laughs> Pendle crosses his arms. He just kind of like looks away. Ravi picks up the bell and says, "Well, it is kind of a nice bell." I know. It's my grandmother's. Just apologize, as you two will be working together, and it'll make everything go a lot smoother. So uh, Engel walks up. He kneels down and looks him in the eye, and says, "I am deeply sorry that your parents didn't raise you better." Pendle gets a little, a little giddy and like a little. Like, oh, no one's ever done this before. But he's trying to keep a straight face. He's like, oh, 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 oh. Sir, yeah, apology accepted. <laughs> wow. He gets up. A look of disbelief on his face, and just walks away. While he's walking away, Pendle looks over to Dor and he's like, oh, "Did you see that?" <laughs> yes, I did, Pendle. It's like I'm royalty. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. All right. So, introductions. Pendle, you know Angle. Uh, this is Dorn. Nice our, to meet you guys. Uh, and I... we have Cast and Angle. And I'm Ravi, the reluctant handler of this. Motley crew. Oh, yeah. you. Did, did someone blackmail you into looking after this halfling? Well... The pay is pretty good, so I'm not complaining. Mm, I see. So, yeah. All right. Good. We're all together. So now, um, as you guys notice, there's two dead horses in the background. Dead horses. And a cart with oxen that's been tied up. And, uh, yeah, Ravi says at this point, uh, well, gentlemen, as much as this is, must be so much fun, the rest of this ride with these oxen, I'm, uh, I'm going to head off to uh, Fandolin. Any, you guys won't be needing your horses. You guys can ride on the oxen. So we wait, have... wait one moment. Mm -hmm. Those horses were specifically picked for us, not you. Mm. Well, <laughs> Shelly works for me, and I do what I want with the horses. Mm. And now, you work for me. So, If anything, yeah. I would work with Shelly. Cast mm -hmm. Ellis hops off the horse. Doesn't care. Thank you, Cast. And uh, you know what, Angle? I'm running this guild. And if you have an issue with it, you can walk home. Because <laughs> I employ Shelly. So, these horses are mine. Hops on the horse. 
Farewell. We'll see you at Fandolin. You're not that big. You don't need two horses. Oh, but his ego no. is. Exactly. <laughs> Gone already. Pendle just care. laughs at that joke because it was hilarious. <sighs> All right. So now, it's the four of you. Ego. There's some um, dead horses that have been left on the side of the road. I will go and pay my respects to the horses. I'm, I'm just going to point the horses and be like, what happened there? We, uh... Yes, this is... Uh, we ran into some issues last night. There was some, uh... Some hooligans out and about that wanted to give us a hard time. I don't... Um, <clears throat> they killed the horses before we got here. Ah, uh, so they're not your horses? No. Those seem like bandits, really. Yeah. Back when I was younger, when we wanted to have a rowdy good time, we didn't kill horses, you know. <laughs> yeah. Are really are children really that different nowadays? Some of them are. It's a rough world out there. Jeez. All right. Um, so, Pendle, as you approach the horses... Um, you notice that the saddlebags have been looted and nearby lies a uh, leather map case. Ooh. I'm going to go pick that up. Can we tell how the horses died? Uh, there's arrows sticking out of them with black feathers. That's pretty obvious. What type of arrows are they? Black feathered arrows. Can can I pick them up and add them to my inventory? Uh, well, they're soaked in horse guts, as they've been there for a while. Uh, there's six. You can take two, because the others right. have not. Well, how many arrows do you have? Maintained. Well, he's got twenty, but isn't that uh, all? Like, well, that's no, all you can carry in a quiver, I guess. That's very disrespectful to the horses. <laughs> well, I'm not sure they'll mind. All right. So, you guys have a map case? Well, Pendle has a map case. Well, Pendle has a map case. What's in the uh, map case? I don't know. Maybe you should open it. <laughs> Pendle is going to open the map case. Good call. Uh, inside, he sees... This map. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> and uh, da, 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 da. there's a big X. Oh, cool! Just I off to the side. I skip over to Dorn. See, oh, look what I found. And there's a big X on it. There's got to be something good there. Interesting. Do we know where we are? Can we go? Can we we're go? Can we go? The, we're at the cart. You guys, yeah. Which, no, no, no. You know, like, do we know where on the map we are? About here. Except it won't let me ping for some reason. Oh, it's not letting me ping. You. Oh, wait. What's that? We're right there? Yeah, oh, my goodness. We're right there. Right there. <laughs> so many pings. Right there. That's where you guys are. Okay. <laughs> We're so close. It wouldn't hurt to stop by. We Weren't that. we on a mission to deliver supplies to another town? Uh, what if we come across more supplies that'll help them? He sighs deeply. I feel like we should find out why, what killed these horses. Maybe. I found, I found the map case right over by the horses. Maybe it's related. We should probably go check it out. Possibly. Yeah, and I'm I'm concerned there's horses here that were attacked. The guys that we came with weren't on horses, or the guys that attacked us weren't on horses, so I'm I'm slightly concerned that somebody else might have befallen some injury out on the trail. I wouldn't mind well, trying we to see attacked? if they're okay. Well well listen, the horses seem to have been dead for a while, isn't that right? As the guts have been soaked into the arrow. Pendle so, puts his hand up into the air. 
Pick me. Yes, Mr. Pendle Open Key. Uh, Pendle Lock and Key, thank you very much. <laughs> so, if we were attacked by guys that are not on horses, then you'd think that normally they'd be, or they wouldn't be traveling long distances, would they? Exactly. Maybe it's related. We should probably go there. Whoa. Uh, and you, you guys are able to tell from the horses that these are the horses that oh what were their names uh Gundarin and Sildar were riding on that left ahead of the caravan that we were supposed to be meeting in Fandolin yeah well we yeah. can't meet them in Fandolin if they never made it yeah so I'm <laughs> I'm going to fill in the new guys that we, the original mission was told to go meet these guys in Vandalin. And uh, it's going to be a little these tough to fulfill it if they're stuck here. Pendle just keeps tapping on the X with his finger. Come on. Don't do that. He'll I, smudge the printing. I'll, I'll <laughs> walk over to Pendle and kind of like look at the map with him. And then I'm like, which way, which, which way is the X? Like looking around. I will use a navigation check. Except there's no navigation. I <laughs> will use... What kind of check would that be? Um, I'm going to guess survival. Mm, survival, because you're in the wild. It's kind of yeah. like a tracking sort of thing. I think that way. And uh, he points, and it's directly to a path, probably about 100 feet down the road. Like a well-worn path, or like yeah, a path. See that path down there? That's probably where. All right, Castello, uh, Castello's kind of like puts his arm around Pendle and just starts walking towards the trail, just ignoring him. By him just kind of oh, I like this Pendle story. Castello, did I ever tell you the story about how I once met a sleeping dragon? I'm sorry, you did what? I went a lot. Pendle will tell him this tale as they walk along. <laughs> we're, we're just walking off into the forest. Angle kind of, you know, goes say, up to Dorn. Yeah, Dorn looks over to Angle. <laughs> I think we need to look after these guys. I did not apply to be a babysitter. It won't be long. We'll get through this all. We'll get you your money. You'll be looked after. That's good. I'm not sure how you can stand this pedal guy. It takes a lot of patience <laughs> and a lot of meditation. Mm. All right. Um, before we get going too far here, um, I just need to know your guys' passive perception. Oh, so like that's, that's like 10 plus your mod for wisdom? Yeah, yeah and then if you're then proficient then in it. Then you get a plus two as well. Want us to roll for it? No. No, no. it's just um, it's on, on your, your skills page. Sheet. It shows it there. Oh, does it really? Yeah. You just need. Do you need percep perception and um, oh, passive yeah. insight as well? Passive perception. Uh, no, just passive perception. One, 13. Thirteen. Oh, thank Damn. you. Fifteen. Thank you. We needed that. Oh, Fifteen's good. Fifteen's good. Well. Fifteen's very good. It's a lot better than what we took. Yeah. Eleven. I was gonna say. You yeah. Know, Wait. For... What were they attacked by? They they keep saying guys. Like what kind of like humans? Dorn, I, Pendle. I what were you I think it by? was. I actually can't remember. They were them. attacked by goblins. It was goblins, uh, man. Goblins. It was goblins, man. It, Sorry. Goblins. I, I, his hand slightly above his head, but they were about this tall and green, and they were very mean. And they were almost as ugly as Pendle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh darn you, kidder. I know you like a good um, joke, Pendle. Okay. So, um, do, 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 do. we are, so we've left the oxen tied up at your camp. They're hidden away they've you guys have tucked them in they're fine they're not going anywhere so okay hopefully hopefully, uh, hopefully we don't come back they're not there yeah 
All right. Um, so how are you guys walking down this path? Uh, are you guys, what's going well, on? I'm currently, I'm telling Castilius about my, the tale of when I met a sleeping dragon. Yeah, we're just walking down the trail. Just I decide to have, you know, a pleasant conversation with Dorn, you know, trying to get to know him. Yep. All so right. I guess it's so two kind of two in the front, two in the back. Yep. Two in the back. We have the halflings walking up front. Yeah. Out of character, that's our hint of like, hey guys, it's time to start thinking tactically. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Think, oh, things might good. happen. You guys but are about to get screwed. I have to do what Pendle would do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Dorn, uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from the town of Doressa. I'm born and raised in that area. How about yourself? I have been, uh, you know, from a nice little wood elf sanctuary, you know. Very nice. And then uh, when I moved, I moved to Neverwinter to open up a nice calligraphy business. It was very nice. Good, and that's going well for you? It's been going pretty well. I decided to open up another little wooden carving shop, you know, a couple years ago. Oh, that's good. Business going well. Besides you know, that. it's pretty good. I've gotten a lot of bells recently, though. Ah, that's kind of a pain in the ass. Damn halfway. Yes. All right. So, as you guys are walking down, um, we have Pendle and Cast that are walking uh, in the lead, and I need Pendle to roll a dexterity check. Yeah. Or, sorry, a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay no problem so Pendle's walking and he puts his foot down and he hears rustling in the trees and for some reason he steps back and he sees this um, snare tighten up and rip up into the trees he's like cool <laughs> I don't think this is something we should be laughing about. Oh, Pendle. Oh. That was would, close. Engel would like to look around to see if there's any other noticeable traps in the area. Uh, roll a perception. Uh, Pendle will also like to, because you said he heard rustling in the bushes, he's going to try and do a perception in that area as well. Okay. Uh, Pendle notices that there was rustling. Uh, Engel is able to tell that um, there is no more traps in the area. All right, boys. Looks like we're safe for now. Seems to probably just been an. Oh, go ahead. Well, it seems to have been an odd little hunting trap, probably. Hopefully, nothing malicious. So it was just like a big net. Uh, it was just kind of like a little hunting snare on the ground, just a little hoop. And uh, uh, okay. the rustling was actually the mechanism whipping it up into the air. So That would make yeah. sense. Yes. Well, e- even though it seems like it might be a hunting trap, I think we should proceed with a little bit of caution. So let's uh, step wisely. Especially since this is the area that they were attacked by goblins and Exactly. Don't worry, boys. If we, uh, I've hunted plenty of goblins in my time, so shh, I'll be able to smell one from a down. mile away. Pendle says, "Shh, keep your voice down." Yes. Castello you mur- talk really loud. Castello mutters to Pendle, "They could probably smell him from five miles away." <laughs> Actually, since my favorite enemy is a goblin, do I get any like bonuses in the future if there are goblins nearby? Um. That's a good question. If there's some goblins, we will find out for you. All right. Well, what's your terrain as well? Cheesecake is my favorite kind of cake, but that doesn't mean I get any bonuses when looking for it or making it. This is a very valid point. Um, that was well, in my racial, racial bonuses. No, I know. You get a modifier when you're fighting them. You have it. No, sure. you don't. It's not when fighting, it's advantage on survival checks to track. Aww. 
as well as on intelligence intelligence checks to recall information about them. Correct. So with this being your favorite enemy, um, you're able to tell that um, probably a dozen goblins have traveled down this road, and you do also notice that there are um, two human-sized uh, bodies being hauled away from the ambush site and down this trail. Boys, I think we better speed up. I think I see your friends maybe being carried away by a dozen or so goblins. Uh-oh. Yes. Right. Yeah. Everybody get your weapons ready. We're going to war. <laughs> Oh. This looks very serious until he hears this. He's like, this guy's really overdramatic. I like him. All right. So uh, just continuing on your walk. Uh, I'm going to try and keep an eye out. I think we should, I think yeah, we should speed sure. up just a yeah, teeny we, bit. We should stealth through, probably. I think we should split up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, no, no, Pendle, Pendle can split up, you know. Oh God! All right, so you guys are just moving at a more cautious rate, sort of thing. Yeah, gotcha. I'm gonna pull out my uh, crossbow. Just being fine. ready. Yeah. I okay. pull out my longbow. I pull Excellent. out my my fists. Excellent. Where the All hell right. have you been stashing them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, you continue on, and um. Just walking about another 10 minutes down. And uh, I need Dorn and Engel to, or Dorn to roll a um, dexterity. Dorn and Engel are just Dorn. Just Dorn, sorry. Oh, God. And oh. Dorn rolls 20. Okay, well then. Um, we have uh, Engel, or sorry, Pendle and Cast have walked up ahead and no issues. And Angle, being a quite a small elf, you can say, has walked ahead. And as Dorn is walking over a certain um, spot, he hears a creak, and then he feels the uh, the I guess the ground fall out beneath him. But uh, with quick reflexes, he's able to grab onto the edge of this so-called hole and uh, keep himself from falling in and he pulls himself out. So Dorn has just escaped a hidden camouflaged pit. Well, damn. This seems a bit more than a hunting trap, guys. Yes. Maybe they're hunting bigger animals. I fear the lives of your friends right now. I think we better hurry it up. I think so too, but let's uh, let's actively keep our eyes open for some traps. Yes. In case there's anything else coming up. Yeah. Pendle, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> see, he he can tell. So Pendle turns to Cass. He's like, see, he can tell I'm pretty skilled if he wants me to go ahead. <laughs> Cast gives him a knowing wink. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. All right. So. At, uh, at this point, you guys come... Where am I going? You come up to a, uh, a clearing. Oh, God. A river running past. And, uh, yeah. Um, all right. So following the Goblin's Trail, you come across a large cave. Or a large cave in a hillside five miles from the scene of the ambush. Um, a shallow stream flows in the cave mouth, which is screened by dense uh, brer thickets. A narrow dry path leads into the cave on the right-hand side of the stream. Where are we coming uh, from? How shallow is the stream? Um, Shallow for me might be a little different. Yeah, you guys are coming from there. <laughs> um, the stream that flows through the complex is only two feet deep. Oh, that's that's really deep. Cold yeah. and slow moving, allowing creatures easily wade through it. Cass, uh, how tall are you? Uh, like three five. Oh uh, yeah, I'm only two foot seven. <laughs> yeah. uh, you still got seven inches. That's your head. 
Dorn, may you hold my backpack as I try to wade through this river? I do not want to get my supplies wet. I, 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 I kind of put my hand up and say, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's look at what's here before we actually walk across the stream. I mean, we are following goblins. Oh, this guy's smart. <laughs> We've um, also dodged two traps. Yeah. Just saying. <gasps> yes, but this seems to be a moving river. And, well, it must have been a pretty good trap if it's able to stay in a nice moving river. If the, if I'm not the river wasn't about moving, then it would be absurd. I'm worried about the goblins being around here and us getting caught in the river. Castell has a good point. Let's, why don't we, I'm going to take a look around and see if I can see any sign of goblins in the area or where like they might be moving through, that sort of thing. I would like to as well. I would All like right. to as well. Just have it Well, All right. So, um, at this point, you are able to see there's a an opening. I over, sniff for goblins. Over here. And uh, you see uh, a, a ring of smoke that's billowing up from uh, in the trees. In or right behind? Uh, well, you're able to tell that there's sort of a clearing, so it's coming from the in clearing. clearing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Does uh, there any smell of meat in the air, like you know, barbecuing flesh? Uh, n no, f no flesh. <laughs> okay, good. And there's, and there's nothing like up here where the entrance is. Uh, just the entrance. Okay, so all the only thing we see is the smoke over here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this seems like a good place to end this episode. We have just traveled our way to the entrance of the cave. Um, be sure to tune in for the next episode. Um, <clears throat> it'll be on this channel here, and we'll see what sort of adventures our heroes get into. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, share. Um, if you're interested in a podcast, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, if you're interested in having some art put into our video, feel free to let me know as well. And um, in the link below, we have a calendar listing of when both of the groups that I DM are live streaming. So if you want to watch us live, um, the calendar's there. And there's times and links on there as well, so you can find us easily. So I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next episode.